Benigno Aquino III, more commonly known as Pinoy, served as the 15th president of the Philippines. Coming from a well-known political family with a background in economics, Pinoy received considerable praise during his time in office. His administration saw the Philippines emerge as a rising tiger economy. Numerous economic reports indicate that the country experienced its fastest growth rate in modern history, averaging 6.2% throughout its tenure. Additionally, the Philippines enjoyed a booming stock market, decreasing national debt, and continually falling unemployment rates. With these accomplishments in mind, is it fair to label the era under President Noy Noy as the golden age of the Philippine economy? Under Aquino's leadership, the Philippines experienced remarkable economic growth, with the GDP expanding at an average rate of 6.2% per year. The country's gross domestic product swelled from $208 billion in 2010 to over $318 billion by 2016. A key focus of his administration was stabilizing the national budget, which contributed to the debt-to-GDP ratio declining from 52.4% in 2010 to 42.1% .1 in 2015. During Ponoy's tenure, the Philippines received multiple credit rating upgrades from the major agencies like Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch. These agencies acknowledged the country's fiscal discipline and strong economic growth, eventually awarding it an investment-grade status. In terms of infrastructure, the Aquino administration boosted spending to improve economic productivity and competitiveness. The Public-Private Partnership, or PPP, program was revitalized, successfully attracting local and foreign investors to finance various infrastructure projects throughout the country. The government also made strides in streaming business registration processes, reducing bureaucratic red tape, and fighting corruption. These efforts led to a significant improvement in the World Bank's estate of doing business index, with the Philippines climbing from a rank of 134 out of 109 economies to 99 by the end of his term. Moreover, Aquino's administration championed key social reforms, including the passage of the Reproductive Health Law, the SIN Tax Reform Law, and the K-12 Basic Education Program. These initiatives aim to promote public health, increase government revenue, and enhance the quality of education in the Philippines, further contributing to the overall battlement of the nation. Now that we've covered a brief overview of Aquino's presidency, let's discuss one of the most debated topics in the Philippine economic landscape, the comparison between Aquino and his successor, Rodrigo Duterte. It's often argued that Duterte inherited a strong economy from Aquino but failed to sustain it, resulting in a rising national debt, slowing economic growth, and more. These points, however, are often misunderstood or misrepresented in some media articles. When comparing the presidencies of Duterte and Aquino, it's crucial to use the same set of indicators and consider the global context during their terms. These factors are often overlooked in the debate. So let's dive deeper. Starting with the most significant indicator of economic growth, gross domestic product, or GDP, as we noted earlier, Aquino's GDP growth averaged 6.2% higher than Gloria Arroyo's at 4.5% and Duterte's only at 3.1% from 2017 to 2021. This data may seem to showcase Aquino's presidency as superior to others, but it doesn't take into account the challenges faced by Arroyo and Duterte during their respective terms. Arroyo's presidency grappled with the 1997 Asian financial crisis and the 2008 global financial crisis, and she inherited an economy from Joseph Estrada, who was ousted during the Second People Power Revolution. Duterte's presidency, too, has been misunderstood. The country was hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic, which severely affected the economic growth. While some may argue that the Philippines' growth rate of 5.9% in 2019 was the slowest in eight years, it's essential to consider that the country was still the third fastest growing economy in Asia. The slowdown in growth can be attributed to various factors often left out of the debate, such as the US-China trade war, protectionism in the European trade union, and Brexit. Moving on, let's discuss other key indicators, including inflation, national debt, and their impact on the Filipino people. Under Aquino's leadership, the country experienced record low inflation rates. In fact, in both 2015 and 2016, inflation remained around 1%. National debt also decreased from 50.2% in 2010 to around 40% by 2016. Additionally, infrastructure spending increased from an average of 2% of GDP during Arroyo's term to 3% under Aquino's administration. It's important to acknowledge that the impressive economic growth under Aquino's presidency translated into some positive effects on the lives of ordinary Filipinos. The poverty rate in the Philippines dropped from 25.2% in 2012 to 16.6% in 2015, indicating that millions of people were lifted out of poverty during his term. 
In terms of education, the Aquino administration implemented the K-12 basic education program, which extended the country's basic education system from 10 to 12 years. This reform aimed to equip students with the necessary skills for higher education, technical vocational training, or employment. The government also increased the budget for education, making it the top priority in the national budget during Aquino's term. However, it's essential to recognize that the benefits of economic growth under Aquino were not evenly distributed. While the poverty rate declined significantly, income inequality remained a persistent issue. The Gini coefficient, a measure of income inequality, barely improved during Aquino's term, indicating that the gap between the rich and the poor was still substantial. This suggests that more targeted efforts and policies are needed to address the uneven distribution of wealth and resources. All right, now that we've taken a closer look at Aquino's presidency, let's discuss both the positive and negative aspects in a way that's more conversational, shall we? So on the plus side, during Aquino's term, the Philippines saw strong economic growth, an impressive average GDP growth rate of 6.2%, making the Philippines one of the fastest growing economies in the region, improved credit ratings. Aquino's administration managed to get the Philippines an investment grade status from major credit rating agencies, which is a testament to the country's fiscal discipline and robust economic growth, infrastructure development, the government increased infrastructure spending and revitalized the Public-Private Partnership, or PPP, program, leading to various projects across the country, education reforms. Aquino's administration implemented the K-12 Basic Education Program, which aimed to improve the Philippine educational system and equip students with the necessary skills for higher education, technical vocation training, or employment. And poverty reduction. The poverty rate in the Philippines dropped significantly during Aquino's term lifting millions of people out of poverty. While Aquino's presidency had its fair share of successes, there were also several criticisms surrounding his administration. Some of these criticisms involved the handling of the budget allegations of political patronage and inefficiencies in certain programs. One significant critique of Aquino's administration was the controversial Disbursement Allocation Program, or DAP. Benjamin Diokno, a former budget chief, claimed that the DAP was similar to the Priority Development Assistant Fund, or PDAF, which was essentially a pork barrel used for political patronage. Diokno said, quote, PDAF was used mainly for political purposes, to ensure legislators get re-elected. They used it to fund whatever their supporters wanted them to. A small project here, a small road or bridge there, scholarships, healthcare, some medicine. In a sense, the DAP was also in that category. In a 2014 column for the business world, Diogno criticized the inefficiency of political patronage, which he believed characterized the Kino's administration's handling of the budget. He wrote, no doubt distributing funds to select local government units makes good political sense. It makes recipient local officials politically indebted to the president and the DILG secretary. But combining politics with the efficient use of public funds is wasteful. Furthermore, Diokno claimed that the Aquino administration's bottom-up budgeting, or BUB program, which was hailed as real reform, was actually a tool for political patronage. In a 2016 lecture assessing Aquino's fiscal performance, he said, The bottom-up budgeting, BUB program, is heralded by the Aquino administration as real reform. In reality, it's a tool for political patronage, a way of capturing political support at the grassroots level. Diokno argued that this program combined politics with the efficient use of public funds, resulting in wastefulness. Former Budget Secretary Diokno has voiced criticisms regarding Aquino's presidency, shedding light on perceived weaknesses in Aquino's administration, especially concerning budget management and alleged political favoritism. It is important to note that Diokno has since held positions as Finance Secretary and Central Bank Governor for the Philippines. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.